What's up, sweaties? That's right, we are truly here at the sweaty mecca, the nerd mecca. It's San Diego Comic Con. Wow. It is truly sweaty and nerdy beyond. You know, it always is. Why am I surprised by that? I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm John Schnapp. I'm joined here by Robert Meyer Burnett, Amy Dallin. We're doing Heroes from San Diego Comic Con. Man, is it, it's a jam. It's more crowded than I remember from last year. What, are, what do you guys think? There First was some breathing room yesterday, but Thursday on the floor is much better than, let's say, tomorrow. Uh, we tried to brave. We, to get here this morning, I had to go through the Hall H line. The Hall H line is going nowhere. One of my little bunk mates I'm with here at the uh, Marriott got up at 6.30 to get his place in line for tomorrow. Oh. So this it's is how it's going. It's a madhouse. It's a madhouse. It's crazy. Well, let's, crazy. let's get right into it. There's a lot of news breaking. San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, late last night, after the Legion panel, uh, Noah Hawley was the very last thing he said. They're like, what's your next project? And he was like, I've got two words for you. First word, doctor. Second word, doom. And every nerd on the planet ran with a story. <laughs> Doctor Doom, there's a movie. And he's doing a solo Doctor Doom movie. I say no. I say he's doing, Noah Hawley is writing the Fantastic Four movie. He's trying to be subtle and cool about it. Because there's no way they would do a Doctor Doom movie. That's just stupid. What are your guys' thoughts? That's like doing a Lex Luthor movie. Totally. Without Superman. Without it's like Superman. the world without Superman. Let's talk about the villains. I, those could probably be done, but probably not like by themselves alone without other things around them or you having met whatever incarnation of their traditional enemies you're supposed to meet. Right. But Noah Hawley working on the Fantastic Four, like we sit here every week being like, give it back to Marvel, give it back to Marvel. And in, in that thought in my head is like, because there's nothing you could do that would make me excited about it. Mm. And then it's like, oh, unless this happened. Okay, well, this is exciting. That's, that's exactly where I'm at. If Noah Hawley is truly indeed writing the, writing the Fantastic Four, I'm overjoyed. Because he's not afraid of the weirdness no. of comics, no, which no. is exciting. Well, Legion is incredible. Yeah, I mean, the fact that we're getting a Legion show and it, it is structured and, and presented the way it is, I'm like, I never thought that would happen. And if that sensibility that we've brought and we've seen in Fargo and now Legion gets brought to the Fantastic Four, count me in. Yeah, I mean, look. If it does get revealed that he's in do really in Victor Von Doom and like, you know, with no Reed Richards. Becoming Doom. Yeah. Oh. Still, I would go see it simply because no Holly is <laughs> writing it. But I think it's, it would be a travesty for him to not like I think he's just being real subtle. And every nerd on the planet was like, yeah, yeah, and he's like relax, think about it. And maybe I'm wrong, but I refuse to be wrong until I'm proven wrong. <laughs> what, any last thoughts before we move on? No, I think you're right. Amy? I'm excited. Yeah. No Holly on any comic book thing is, is actually really good news for us nerds because, I mean, look, just look at Legion and how incredible that series is. So if you haven't seen Legion, get on it. It's amazing. And there's a giant Legion billboard on the side of this hotel. That's true. It's like 25 stories tall. It's giant, and he's like his head's exploding with Superman electricity. Couldn't leap I am over getting it in a freaked bound. out by the the gifted ads that are just like, "Have you been tested for the X gene?" Tonight one is of the, the wonderful things party. about Comic Con is yes. that you just get like, "I'm living in a different reality, and it's a creepy one." <laughs> the thing is, what if you did get tested and you did prove positive for the X gene? I'm kind of excited about finding out. But it's the Sentinel Foundation, so no. Oh, that's so right. You'd be like, here's your padded cell. Um, let's get into the next bit of news. Shazam. It begins shooting in February uh, 2018 with David F. Sandberg directing. The Rock as Black Adam is supposedly not going to be in it. And I guess Suicide Squad 2 is going to follow possibly in March. So that's kind of the, the rumor. The Suicide Squad 2 part is the rumor. The announcement is Shazam is shooting. David F. Sandberg, the director of Lights Out. Annabelle, you know, we've been talking about, oh, he's in the possibility. He's in the ring to do it. Now it's official. He's doing it. What are your guys' thoughts on Shazam, Amy? Well, if we have a director, are we close to getting a star? Mm, that's, this right. is a, not a lot of time before we need to make this movie. Uh, so I want to be excited, but I'd like to know who's writing it and who's playing Shazam Somebody's and gotta work why out. Green Johnson isn't in it. I have a lot of questions. Right? Uh, yeah, I do too. And, uh, you know, again, is it part of the DCEU? You know, what is, what is Shazam? It How better does it be. I mean, we've got Justice League coming out, then Shazam. I, I, I don't, again, it seems a little haphazard to me. All right, check it. Tomorrow is Hall H. Well, then we we'll DC know. and Marvel. They got some big announcements. Obviously, we're going to see a Justice League trailer. We're going to see some clips from Aquaman. They're probably going to announce who Shazam is. Both Billy Batson. They're going to announce who Billy Batson is and 
I mean, what do you just call him Shazam now? He's not Captain Marvel. I guess we he call says, him my Shazam name is now. the thing We're that I say to translate. I am now the electrical bolt. What I mean, Shazam. I guess that's what he is. So whoever's going to be playing the electrical bolt will be announced. <laughs> I, I guarantee it. That's got to be part of it. You know. I mean, they also they announced a couple of movies. Their untitled dates for DC. Like Wonder they, Woman two. Yep, Man of Steel two. You know, the Batman. I guess we'll find out tomorrow. So uh, tune in to all the other news people. We'll be talking about Doctor Doom meets uh, Shazam or whatever. I don't know. So any any final <laughs> thoughts before we go on to the next one? Uh, about Shazam? All I know is that uh, I know that there's now going to be a Shazam hot toy, and I'm pretty excited about <laughs> that. Yes, I am. That's right. <laughs> well, you know, it would be cool if they did an Alex Ross style Shazam right. hot toy. I always right. like that version. He, DC it, directed yeah. one. It was pretty good. Thirteen yeah. inches. Um, number three, we've got Inhumans. The new IMAX trailer just dropped, and. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the jury's still out for me. I'm They're sorry. They're kind of starting to get me. This was the trailer after which I was like, okay, it's not like I'm not going to watch the show with right. Karnak taking everybody down. Like, right. uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Still lots that we won't know until it actually gets here. But uh, the hair looked a lot better on Medusa. Ugh. I mean, it looked like 1996 hair. <laughs> like 1996 yeah. CG hair. And I'm just sort of like, look, this is going to be an IMAX. <laughs> it's going to be enormous. Where every... Strand. I've seen video games where every strand and fiber of hair, they're like, we finally got the hair down. Everything else looks like a doll. <laughs> right. But at least the hair is falling. Why can't they have realistic hair in a goddamn Inhumans movie about Medusa? I mean, you'd think that this would be the, the first thing. I was, we, don't have, we don't even know what we're doing with Lockjaw, but we totally got the lock on the hair because they've been doing that since for like 20 years in video. Atari had better hair than this. I'm just biased because I took a picture with a giant plushy Lockjaw yesterday. That's mm. what's happening. Oh, That's okay. okay. Yep, don't listen to me. I'll watch the trailer again next week. I'll give you a real opinion. <laughs> um, but right now I'm just in Lockjaw. I, I don't, I, there's a disconnect with me. The moon and Hawaii. Like, I don't quite understand why it's half set in Hawaii and half on the moon. But the story's starting to, we're getting the first piece of story right. in this it's trailer, true. which it's is true. that, like, he's cast out and everybody else is, which is interesting because do you get, like, dual protagonist thing going on? But why Hawaii? Get... I think he'd go to, like, Paris or, or one of the great European cities. I well, mean, because well, I think he's been stranded there. Yeah, and Triton right? can't, like, leave. Well, Triton is also, like, lo locks down on, like, some other people who have, uh, who can possibly go through that Terrigen mist. So he's like, he's well, like, okay. you know, so maybe he does show up in Hawaii and they're also like, happens to be where we're shooting the series. So it's like, <laughs> it makes sense, but there's just something that I can't, I can't pinpoint other than the first trailer and this trailer just have this very, I, I just call it cheap look to it. Yeah. We talked about Black Panther le uh, in the earlier episode right. and, and the, the level of design that's in every element. And that's the kind of thing that like has raised our standards yes. to this point where we're like, we really want absolutely everyone doing every part of this on their A game. And we, we may still see that, but I think that's what we're sort of responding to in the trailers is like, we want a level of brilliance in everything we're looking at on the frame. Most definitely. Uh, we're, we're they're picky. on the moon. And it looks like they're in somebody's hotel. Right. Or I mean, it literally looks like, oh, this hotel is kind of futuristic. Let's use that as a set. No. <laughs> the, or the L.A. Convention Center. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it really here feels we are. Like, it does feel like that. I wish it didn't. I mean, I've been waiting. You guys all know how much I love the Inhumans. And it's sort of that's why it's even more disappointing. I'm still going to wait because I, I could be 100 percent wrong. And I want to be 100 percent wrong. I want to be like shown out of context. All of these cheap sets just scream at me that it's you know, vomitously cheap production value. But when it's all put together, you'll actually feel like you're on the moon in the Inhumans world, right? I, come on. Well, also, Lockjaw doesn't seem to really move. He just sits there. And I'm wondering, do they have the CG budget to, like, make him move and look like a real big dog? Mm. Or does he just stay in one place until he zaps somewhere else? I mean, we've now seen there's two shots of Lockjaw in that trailer. Maybe they're still working on it. Yeah, them. they're still working. I, you know, I saw that plush Lockjaw, and I was like, <laughs> man, I might even have to get that. So, you know, I love you get it. Yeah. It's oh, it's for, well, there's it's, a giant one on the yeah. floor, but there's also a little plush one that I have a to little plush later one. this weekend. Yeah. Oh. And it's not little. It's like, it's you know. Bigger than a Funko. It's like an actual. Oh, that's got to be. But it's acquired. not a giant lock. So yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. But we all have high hopes for the Inhumans. It comes out September 1st in theaters, in IMAX. Hopefully they get the hair better. Come on. Um, we're, all, we're all rooting for you to <laughs> rock that thing. Number four, we've got Kingsman, this golden circle. The second trailer came out. There's also a red circle version. I mean, not red circle. Red, you know, R-rated version. Uh, what did you guys think about the second Kingsman's trailer? Start with you. I thought it looked great. 
I mean, I loved Kingsman. I mean, I loved the tone of it. I was rooting for Sam Jackson to destroy half the planet because he was right. And I kind of love that. And, and I, I love the idea. I guess the villain is Julianne Moore is the villain. And she's trying to control. The reason it's called the Golden Circle is it's the Golden Circle of drugs, mm -hmm. like the drug cartels in China. And she wants to, like, drug the whole world or something, which I think is hilarious. And, and the fact that, you know, the statesmen are... are you know, Jeff Bridges is the runs the statesman, and they're from the old west. They're cowboys. Mm -hmm. It's I can't wait. Yeah, it, it looks great. It looks completely fantastic. I'm glad they're not showing too much. I felt right. like the the second trailer was just a, for myself. Like, all right, I know Colin Firth's in it. Now he's got the eye patch, so we know. I just feel like you don't have to show. Don't sell me anymore. So I guess if a third trailer comes out, I probably won't watch it because I just want to enjoy the film. Yeah. They already sold me on the first trailer. Amy, how about you? I, the the movie the first movie there were things in it that I absolutely loved and there were things it was kind of hit or miss for me but it was a lot more hit than miss right. uh, so I am excited and the the new trailer I like that it shows off that they're leaning into the stuff they have fun with they're sort of like version of what America is like. They're clearly <laughs> like, this was really fun. Let's go back to that, but do it more and just try to enter the running for best use of Channing Tatum, um, oh. which is just an increasingly competitive category. <laughs> uh, and it, I, so I think it looks like a lot of fun. I, I need to know what happened to the blonde agent from the first movie. I was checking, I was like, she lived, right? Where is she? Yeah. She did live. Maybe She's probably on some other separate mission so they could do a spin-off movie only with her. She, that, she was stuck in the, cool. the curse of the competent side female character who just has <laughs> nothing to do and disappears years forever um but the new movie looks tons of fun yeah for sure if you haven't checked out that uh, trailer it's on youtube right now watch it let us know what you think about the new kingsman the golden circle all right what's up next we got uh avengers infinity war poster let's write some concept art that just dropped of course iron man is super giant everybody else is behind him is this the one with iron man and uh, nebula yep. on the either side yeah yep. You got, uh, obviously, they're just like letting everybody know it's, uh, you know, Iron uh, Spider Man is in that iron spider suit. He's got a, the upgrade that you saw in Spider Man look, Homecoming. I love that about Civil War. I, I had a, there was an eight inch figure of the iron spider suit. Right. I loved it. I hope he's got the, you know, the legs. That's right. I love that. I can't bring it on. And you know what that means? Hot toy iron spider suit. <laughs> That's, That's right. What I'm talking about. That means Robert Meyer Burnett will be living the rest of his life broke because you're putting out too many hot toys. They really are. <laughs> That's right. The hot toys booth, the sideshow booth here is incredible. And I, I just. Did you melt when you first saw it? I don't know what happened to me. Some physiological <laughs> happened. Uh, things happened. Things uh, went places. I just, I had to like calm myself. It was <laughs> terrifying. Right. <laughs> it's just terrifying. They're scooping him up. They, everybody, I wanted to thank everyone who came out to the meet and greet. Yesterday, we had it over here at the Hilton Bayfront. It was really fun to hang out with everybody. Everybody who got a, a Heroes poster, please come on by to uh, booth 3917. You can get it signed by myself, Amy Dallin, and Robert uh, today on Friday. Um, definitely come on by. And we'll also be at Comic-Con on Saturday and Sunday. You'll just have to find us. So it's going to be like a little Pokemon thing. But like, <laughs> there's Ashley, Ashley and Jason. Get them. There's a one poster. Don't has get them. Yeah. But do say <laughs> hi. Right. Don't tackle them. <laughs> I'm not trying to say like manhandle Jason Inman and Ashley Robinson. But go up to them and be like, would you please sign? <laughs> but don't talk like that. So, <laughs> so, yeah, thanks so much. It was really great to, to hang out and... <laughs> And meet everybody and then watch Robert lose his voice. Uh, it was pretty good. So you don't want to miss going to the next meet and greet because they're really fun. And, uh, you know, definitely come and, come and bother us. If you see us on the floor and you have one of those posters, I printed out 25 of two different variants. Uh, so you can definitely get, you know, 25 one. The 25 one are all gone. The sweaty's got those yesterday. So there's only 25 left today. So... You know, that's an exclusive. Yo, that's right. That's man. a super, super show exclusive, John. Total, total San Diego Comic-Con exclusive from Collider Heroes. That's right. You're joking, but that is what that means. Yes. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's talk about Titans. Began shooting yesterday um, with Akiva Goldsman. I guess he's writing it. I don't know if he's directing it, but he's writing. Well, he has been Titans. directing. He's okay. been directing. He's directing these horror films. And, I, you know, I don't know what that means. Did he, he, did he direct Rings? No, no, or he just wrote it. The seat or the sequel. The yeah, sequel. he he also directed this movie. I think it was called Samantha. As a comedy. Okay, it's some horror film. I'm just okay. Which know. network is Titans going to? I That's keep the, losing. That's the track. brand new DC kind of like subscriber. -based oh yes, thing. yes, yes. The streaming. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, look, who's I'm playing a, Starfire? That's all. They I have about. not announced any of that stuff uh, so far. Maybe Starfire is an important it. thing in my life. Starfire is very important. So is Raven. Don't be leaving out Raven. Oh, I love Raven. 
So, you know, I, I like Raven. So Trigon. Trigons of the evil father. That's right. Get really, on your Teen Titans sweat. I'm very interested in this project specifically because they have like a whole generation of kids who grew up on the animated Teen Titans. Right. Which is, uh, shares a lot of similarities with the comics, but is different from sort of like the 80s new Teen Titans or the 60s Teen Titans. Yep. And I don't know, like, are they paying attention to those influences? Are they using it just to pick like the name recognition characters? Are they trying specifically to convert that set of people into watching their live action shows? Or are they doing something totally different? Yeah, and it's also... Is it, isn't it weird that I don't know the answers to those questions and they started shooting today? Is that because they're really good at secrecy or because yes. I've just been like failing to look no, at the No, they're right really websites? good at secrecy. They really are. I mean, I you know, Akiva Goldsman is involved with Star Trek Discovery, of which there's a panel today, and he's also involved with Titans. So Star Trek and Titans are two things I've loved my whole life. Is Akiva Goldsman going to destroy them both in a year? I certainly I hope not. I hope he's going to like go from the Bible of Marv Wolfman and George Perez, I that original so. run, and just be like, look, here, let me ask you both. Do you think Dick Grayson will be in this new version, Robert? Yes. Maybe. I mean, he ought to be, but I get so like not clear on what they will let people do in the different right. <laughs> incarnations right. of licensed things. I mean, to me, Dick Grayson is as much a part of Titans. He is the core. He's sort of the, the Scott Summers, the way Scott Summers leads, Cyclops leads the X-Men, Dick Grayson is the leader of the Titans. Yeah, it sort of has to be Dick Grayson. That's yeah. how I feel about it. And look, I know they announced a Nightwing movie. How about make a Batman movie first? I mean, that's kind of where my whole thing is. It's so, it's so weird. The DC films, they're like, hey, we're going to do these weird side things. Do, 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 you know, look, I'm wait, I can't wait for the announcement tomorrow to clarify all of this madness. But uh, uh, Hall H, that's what we're talking about right now. The expectations for tomorrow, I just said it. My expectations is... DC's Warner Brothers panel, not only are we going to see a brand new Justice League with probably a lot of new footage that probably Joss Whedon actually shot and directed, but we're going to see some Aquaman clips. We're going to find out who Shazam is. That's my guess, because why not make the big announcement tomorrow at the biggest nerd event ever for the whole year, especially if they start shooting in a couple months. Why not drop that news tomorrow? That would be the biggest news that they could possibly drop. Unless they had a Batgirl. Unless they had a Batgirl Which and Joss I, Whedon, wow. I think that might be coming too, actually. Whoa. I was going to say that. It's a lot. It's a lot. That's I don't big. know. It's it's pretty far out in the sense that I, I literally have no idea when they're planning any of these movies for anymore because it changes every time I check. Right. But uh, they've got a lot of potential shoes they can drop. Yeah, I think they've, they've announced at least 13 or 14. I'm not even joking. Like people, are like, that's not, look, look it up. There's 13 or 14 potential DC movies, none of them slated except for Aquaman, which comes out next year. So the possibilities are literally endless for them to just like let go 2018, 19, 20, even if they want to rock out and do 21 and 22, be like, we were slating all this stuff. But they can do a great presentation because they have so many question marks yes. right now. We have question marks next to the things like Flash and Nightwing and Batgirl yeah. and whatever's happening with Green Lantern. Like all of that stuff. Gotham you City have, Sirens. Gotham yeah. City Flash. Sirens. Like there's, yeah. there's a lot of potential questions they could be answering. Totally. Well, uh, what about Marvel? What do you think? I mean, we already know that Avengers Infinity War is going to screen tomorrow. Not to screen the movie, but just that trailer <laughs> that a bunch of other people like Ken Knapsack and, uh, and Mark Ellis and Christian Harloff, they got to see it. We're st we still haven't seen it, and we're very jealous. Right. We're very jealous. And I think one more day. I've heard that they've held back. They held back from D23. They held back Thor. They held back Black Panther. So I'm sure, I mean, I would love to see the entire cast of both movies come out on stage. Wow, that's what that's what I want to see because I, I it just tickles me to death to think that Jeff Goldblum would walk out on stage in Hall H representing a Marvel movie, or they should just have him be the ringmaster of the entire event. Hey. Here's Jeff Goldblum to bring you the Marvel the Hall Grand H panel. Master to announce. Right. I've arranged Everything. the following oh. match. I love see, it. See, that's what I would do. That would be fantastic. Yeah. And so. they might when Loki came out when Hiddleston came out dressed in full Loki garb, you know. It, that was just the greatest moment of Comic-Con ever. All right. So last year, we got to see a ton of amazing stuff at the Marvel Hall H panel. This year, not only do are we going to see Thor Ragnarok and Black Panther presentations and Avengers Infinity War, but we're probably also going to see some Ant-Man and the Wasp because they've been shooting. So we're going to see yep. some clips, maybe an early trailer. And Captain Marvel, we are going to see some concept art. I, I guarantee it. That. I mean, they've got to rock that. That's how I feel. About and I, I think that they're going to announce the name of the next Avengers movie. Ooh, that would be that's insane. Insane. part two. Part two. I think they're going to because be, they've been they've been so cagey. They made such a big deal about well, the name itself is a spoiler. Well, I think they're going to announce it. 
Wow. I mean, because if they just didn't want us excited enough, <laughs> they're going to just... It, because I remember the last Marvel panel, the one with Hiddleston, I was waiting. I, I was the best panel ever. And I, I was like, I wonder if they're going to announce the name of the new Avengers movie. And Feige's like, oh, wait a minute. Like the panel was over. And he goes, oh, oh wait a second. He columboed it. One more thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it was one yeah. more thing. And they had that video, you know, with the pounding and the metal and the... And I was like, I literally, tears started streaming down my eyes. <laughs> and then the logo came in, and I was like, oh my God. It was great. I think That's they're going right. to do that. With, I, I think they're going to do the same thing. Let me backtrack a little bit. I think DC is going to be like, and uh, let's announce Joss Whedon is going to come out on set, on stage. That'd be a hell and of he's going to uh, bring on all of the Just League. Yep. I, I'm hearing some rumors that that is possible. That might happen. You didn't hear it from me, but though you just did hear it from me because it's a it's a rumor right now. That's <laughs> all I'm trying to say. But I think also Henry Cavill might show up too. If if everybody's going to be there, why not have the guy who's not dead? Obviously, we've seen the Target commercials cut it out already. There is a Justice League Superman hot toy. That's pretty I know exquisite. this is really. Hang on a minute. We don't know if he's in the movie. We all know he's in the movie. All, everyone. Every single it's person. It's hard to make movies in this day. You can't secretly have Superman in your movie. It's yeah. impossible. No. Isn't like, Superman dead? No. Actually, we saw the dust and dirt moving. It's like, come on. All right. We just we need to know, how did he come back to life? So that's like you know, a little plot point that we're going to have to deal and with. And will he rock the mullet? I, think, I, I seriously think he's going to rock not only the mullet, but the black suit. Yes. And that's going to be some fun. Google Superman mullet. Yes. You, you'll be happy you did. Definitely do. And that's it for our show. Thanks, guys, for watching the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Collider Heroes variant presentation. Here we are. We're in the Bayfront Hilton. We're up, you know, there's the millions of sweaty people downstairs that we have to join in a few minutes, like slowly walking to our next destination. Like, oh, God, I can't walk any slower. I would be standing if I could walk any slower. That's how it really felt, literally. And, and between people stopping you and asking for selfies. Hey. You know? But I like it when it's international flavor. I met a lovely couple from Tijuana just now. Right. They watch us. People watch us, you know, all over the world. Totally. Scotland, what's up? Well, you know, so I, he was like, hey, I love the way you make fun of us. But he said, oh, tools, oh, tools. I was like, oh, Shannon. Shannon, what's up, man? And I got to, dude, I met Grant Morrison, and I talked to him for a half an hour yesterday. That's right. I was at the Wired Cafe, just me and Grant broing down. I was like, dude. And I, I said, he tells me, he goes back and he reads his work. And I, I said, really? And he, I was like, why do you do that? And he goes, because I forget, mate. I forget what I write. And I'm like, I have these ideas. And I asked him, I said, what is your favorite thing of everything that you've written? Because I went off about Animal Man and all this. Because you know what my favorite thing is? I love the filth. Mm. And I was like, dude, I love the filth. And I go, I have, yes, I have the hardcover. Uh, the deluxe edition? Yes, it's so. And he, first of all, the nicest guy in the world. Yes. I mean, he was the, and his, I met his lovely wife, Yep, and he is totally awesome. Well, you know what the greatest thing about Comic-Con is? Is you get to do that, because like literally later that night, I was at the Fandango party, hung out with Chris and a Grant. All of us were a lot drunker, but uh, that's what you do when you go to San Diego Comic-Con. You hang out with everybody. Everybody's at, you know, just milling about. You can yep. just simply run into Grant Morrison. You can run into all of your, your, your favorite writers and artists actors, everybody who's involved in the business is here because that's part of it. That's kind of the fun. Yeah, we're complaining about like slogging around, but at the same time, I, I would rather be nowhere else than right here at Comic-Con. By the way, if anyone comes here, you got to go see the Blade Runner VR experience. Oh, my How God. How is it? It's and you so have, good. It's so you good. You have to do it today. And you have you to have look to do down. I Don't did forget the, to look down. I did, did that down? and looked up. I was like, we were like going by that Coca-Cola sign and like some weird Atari. So I was like, yo, and like we're chasing another spinner. You're inside of a spinner. You're inside of a spinner. So I'll, I'll, you know what, if you haven't seen Blade Runner, you don't know what we're talking about. You were like, you mean the spinners? No. You're inside not a fidget spinner. Kind of Confirmed, John fidget, fidget spinners are the main characters That's of Blade right. Runner 2049. It's the uh, emoji movie, fidget spinners. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so uh, anyway, the VR, the Blade Runner VR experience actually takes the cake for me for like probably the last five years of anything. It yep. even beats nice. the Tron uh, the Tron uh, Legacy, uh, you know, where they had the Daft Punk and the cool car. You're like, oh, my God, this is, the this is better than that. This has the actual a giant life-size spinner. You come out of the VR experience. I, I did a whole Facebook Live thing. Just go on to my Facebook. You watch. You can stream. It's like it's 10 minutes. I got nerdy. I was talking to all the people with the umbrellas. They were like, where are you a replicant? I was like, no. The police. <laughs> like, they're in character. There's everybody in the world of 2049 walking around. You're in a city street. It's raining. It's insane. Congratulations, Alcon, for doing, I think, one of the greatest presentations I've ever experienced. It really, truly is. It, you feel like you're transported. I don't know if the movie's going to be any good. I really want it to be amazing. I loved it, Denis Villeneuve. So, but the, this experience was like one, one, of a, one of a kind. You have to go. Nice. And I'm, just, you know, stand in line for like 10 minutes or four hours. It's worth it. 
Yeah, I know. She's like, I don't have four hours, but like, call the people that you know to try to get that thing. You're gonna be like, yo, I need to get in there. So. Can't they just bring it to your comic shop? You know, bring it. To- Please bring it to my comic shop. <laughs> that would be great. They yes. just take it on tour. I assume you're watching this. House of Secrets, Burbank, California. That's right. And we'll, and we'll see you later tonight at all the different uh, various uh, San Diego Comic-Con parties because there's a whole bunch tonight. <laughs> there's a whole bunch tomorrow. It's going to be crazy. Ever The whole crew behind us right here is completely nursing massive hangovers. They're all ready. They're like shaking, like, hurry up and shut up. Shut up. I need to sleep. All right. We're out. You've been watching. What episode would this be of Collider Heroes? I can't even remember. 126? 126. 125? 125. It is 125. That all the, the people who are drunk behind me over here were like, yeah. So, no, they didn't. They actually knew what the hell was going on. All right. Amy, where can people find you online? You can find me at EnthusiAmy everywhere, and I will probably be posting cool photos all weekend. I met Erica Henderson yesterday. Ooh. I went to the, her spotlight panel, The Artist of Squirrel Girl. John Allison from Giant Days introduced her. That's my favorite thing about Comic-Con. Watch your favorite people. Nerd out on your other favorite people. Go to the panels, y'all. You're missing out if you don't. <laughs> Mr. Olson did a fantastic Heroes poster that me and Robert and Amy are on. He did you as Squirrel Girl. It's, it's unbelievable. Like, it's like unbelievable. Hyper photorealistic. We'll post it on our, t- our, our Twitters. You can check it out. You rock, Olsen. And uh, where can we find you, Robert? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at BurnettRM, on Instagram at RM Burnett, or on Facebook at Robert Meyer Burnett. And a special shout out to Scott Fleming for doing that incredible artwork for all of the heroes. He did like covers for every comic book. And those are the exclusives. I said, hey, man, can we just print these out and give them to fans? He was like, yeah. So I printed out a bunch of these like really big posters on deluxe paper and I'm giving them out to fans. We're going to sign them. So come by booth 3917 supplies incredibly extra limited. So see you next week. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.